Hi guys, um, my name is Amber Smart and um, I am a certified Tableau professional. I've been using Tableau for over five years now. I have my own company called Smart Metrics and I uh, recently stepped away from a job with um, a local nonprofit for 11 years, worked there for 11 years, and in uh, January started my own uh, company, Smart Metrics, going full time into that. And so that's what I do all day, every day, is work in Tableau, and I absolutely love it. I think it's an amazing tool. Um, there's my contact information, amber at understandmydata.com. If you happen to get into Tableau or you have questions, feel free to reach out anytime. Um, today, we're going to go uh, do an overview of Tableau. I don't work for Tableau, and I don't get compensated from them for anything. I just absolutely love the product and want to share it with you guys. So I'll do a quick overview of some of the products that they have, the costs associated, and some different certifications that you can get through it. We'll connect to a public data set, then we'll interact with the data and build a dashboard, and then we're going to publish it for public interaction. You guys could actually interact with it, and then we'll do some Q&A. But uh, we'll keep it more conversational, so feel free to interrupt me if you have a question. Um, if you wanted to follow along, you could as well. Tableau, you can download it for free. Anybody in here actively using Tableau, like on a regular basis? Okay, cool. And we'll start with very square one, but feel free to interrupt me if I'm showing you guys something and you go, well, can it do this or what about this? And we'll go from there. So just more conversational. Okay, so the first thing, um, Tableau.com, they have a great website, um, amazing community. I believe that's what sets it apart from like uh, Power BI, those type of tools. Um, the community is absolutely amazing. I'm a Tableau ambassador, um, as well as like I say, a certified um, Tableau professional. There's different certifications. Um, the first one is in Associates, it's just a test that you take. And then the professional is a test that you take and then uh, the analysis that you do is then uh, graded by a panel. I flunked the first time I, I did it and so it's, it's very difficult but I was able to pass the second time and your certifications are good for three years. Again, the community is great. You have a question, people will jump on and answer it. You can download it for free and use it for a couple of weeks for free. Um, and then if you have a, a .edu email, you can actually get a copy for free for a whole year to use. So that's great. And then the products, I have a lot of people ask, well, um, what are the different tools? So you have the Tableau desktop, and then you have, um, which uh, they also have an app for iPhone and Android. And uh, I'll be using Tableau desktop today. They also have a really cool tool that just came out called Tableau Prep that will allow you to prepare your data before you get it into Tableau to analyze. Once you've done your analysis and you've created your presentation, then how do you share it? And there's two different ways to share it. You can share it with Tableau Online or you can share it with Tableau Server. It just kind of depends. Tableau Server is something that you would maintain on site if you had the IT resources to maintain that. Tableau Online, you're gonna let Tableau maintain that for you. There are, you know, there's pros and cons to going each way, so it kind of just depends on what, what your scenario is that you're working with. Any questions on just the basics of the tool and how to get to it? Okay, cool. So then we'll go to uh, the costs associated. It's um, approximately seven, I think it's $70 a month for the uh, desktop tool that you pay once a year, so $840 a year. Um, with that, you do get an account for online. You also get Tableau Prep. Now, once you start to get into enterprise solutions, they offer different licenses based on how many users you have. So you may have one person that's got a desktop license, and then you might have hundreds of people in your organization that are just on the server side, so their cost is going to be less because they're not going to be creating. They're just going to be consuming what you create. Okay, so we're going to go into Tableau, and I'll show you just how cool this, this tool is. So I've opened it up, um, this is a blank canvas is what I refer to this as. And over here we've got some different options. I'm gonna move that out of the way. So the first thing I'm gonna do is connect to data. And I just got this random data set um, online and what I did is um, I connect, I just downloaded, it. it's just an Excel file, but I, I stored it in my Dropbox. So what I'm gonna do here, um, you'll see that there, is a, there are a lot 
of options to connecting. So these are all the different data uh, sources that you can connect to, as well as just a generic ODBC. So a lot of options here, which is fantastic. I'm gonna go to Dropbox, and inside my Dropbox, I'm gonna sign in. It's gonna ask if I want to allow it, and I do. It's now safe to close this, so let's close it. Okay, and then we should see, if we don't see it this way, here she is, she codes, and I have long-term unemployment statistics, kind of a boring topic, but wah, wah. Okay, so I've connected, and uh, now as my data updates in Dropbox, it's going to automatically update in Tableau, so I don't have to go reconnect or refresh or anything like that. It's, it's a live connection in the cloud, which is great. Had I chosen to connect to an Excel file on my desktop, then yes, I would have to go and do uh, create refreshes and manually update. But anytime you connect to something in the cloud, it's just gonna embed your credentials and automatically refresh. So this is what just, I have four simple columns worth of data. So I'm gonna go to this worksheet here and you'll see in the upper left, you'll see my data source here. I'm sheet one of long-term unemployment statistics. I have uh, these three dimensions here. I have age, gender, and the period, and then the number of unemployed down here in my measures. The great thing is I can take any of my dimensions and make them measures. I can take any of my measures and make them dimensions, and I have a lot of flexibility to customize this. So if you get dirty data or you get data that, um, like a date format that's really janky, you can actually fix that within here without having to fix it within your data set, which is great, especially if you're bringing in uh, various data sets and one um, date is formatted month, day, year, and the other ones maybe day, month, year, that type of thing. You can fix it within here without having to go to um, the database and make those changes. So what you'll see here, we've got dimensions up here, we've got age, gender, period, and it automatically knows that that's a date and that the other ones are strings, but I could change these uh, different types to become a number or um, something else or a geographic role if I needed to. So what I'm going to do is these are called pills. So if I bring age over to rows, you're going to see these are the different age uh, variances that are in my data set. And then I can just bring measures up to columns and I can see how many I have and quickly sort it. So quickly right off the bat, I can see how many I have in each age group. And then if I wanted to break it down by year, I can do it like this. It breaks it down super quick. I can do some um, shifting around of things. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a very basic dashboard today that will allow the user to interact with it and uh, maybe come up with some own questions because really when it comes down to it, what makes a great dashboard? What is, um, how do you visualize data uh, well, and the way that you know if you're visualizing it well is if it leads to really great conversation. So if you, you're not necessarily there using this to give them the answers, you're using this to uh, give the tools to whoever the audience of your dashboard is to get them to have conversations because through the conversations, those conversations are gonna lead to discoveries and that's really the whole point and purpose of a dashboard. So. What we're going to do is we're going to build a dashboard that will allow the end user to interact and play with and ask questions themselves that hopefully will then lead to some discoveries with the data set. So again, these are called pills. You're going to notice some of them are blue and some of them are green. And the reason for that is um, a blue means that it's um, discrete and a green means it's continuous. So when we say discrete, thinking more of like buckets, when we think, when we see green, we're gonna think more continuous, we're gonna think of something that just keeps going, that's not broken up into buckets. But I have the ability to change this to a bucket if I wanted to and make it um, discrete. So we have a lot of flexibility. What I love most about Tableau is what I hate most about it as well. It can do anything. And so that also, um, can be frustrating because there's you know 10 different ways to skin the cat and so just because I build it one way another person may build it the exact 
same end result, but build it a completely different way. And there's pros and cons to doing each way. So really it's, um, Tableau can be super simple and it can quickly get really complex depending on uh, what your scenario it is and what problems you're trying to solve. So we'll get started real quick with just building something real basic. So what I usually do, I'm just gonna walk you through kind of how I think and what I do. Um, I really have not looked at this data set much on purpose because I wanted to just kind of demonstrate for you guys when I get a data set, how, what do I do with it? What does my thought process look like? So what I usually do is try to get familiar with the data set. First I wanna know, well, how many records are in this data set? And I can simply uh, double click here and I can see, I wanted to show a label real quick, I can see that I have 1708 rows of data. It's like, okay, so I know I've got that much. And then I might look at each of these and kind of go, okay, so I've, these are my different age brackets. So um, got that, I know kind of what I'm working with there. Obviously gender, I'm gonna have men and women, which is great. And then what time frame am I working with? I'm working with 2005 to 2015. Then I might think, well, you know, how many records am I working with with each year? So I would say it looks like it's pretty, yeah. So like 2015 is probably a partial year of data, so I need to keep that in mind. If I'm doing any type of analysis, I might want to um, exclude 2015 or maybe just see, let's look, we can expand this out and I can actually see what I've got. So let's say I wanted to take color here and I just wanted to look at quarter. Yes, yeah, so I can see in 2015 all I have is the first quarter. So I might keep that in mind as I'm looking at this data. Um, maybe I want to exclude it or maybe I just want to look at Q1, what have you. So I feel like I'm a little bit more familiar with the data just by doing that. So then I'm going to think, okay, I'm going to start pretty high level as I'm analyzing this and then I'm going to create a dashboard. So high level you know, we're starting with year. So if I just have every single year listed here, um, I'm just gonna start with that because my goal is I'm gonna create a dashboard that's interactive where they can click on and see different things. So I might have year, and then I might come over here and say, okay, I'm gonna have gender, and maybe I'm gonna have um, number of unemployed per gender. I'm gonna come back over here and do unemployed per year. So I've got this going for me. I've got, I can see uh, men and women. Um, and then maybe I come over here and I wanna do the age brackets. And I wanna see the number of unemployed here. Cool, so just having these three sheets, I could come over here and start a dashboard and just start pulling them over here and you can pull them over in any type of order that you want to. And I can make, let's say I want to make 2015, I can make it my filter. So if I just click on 2005, these other two are going to filter and change based on me clicking this here, which is pretty cool. I can also make this a filter. So I can come over here and say, well, just show me the women. And it's going to be interactive and change these other visuals. Same for here. Again, this is very basic, high level um, interacting with the data here. But what, you know, what makes a really good visual and what makes it kind of fun are icons. And so I don't know if you guys are familiar with the noun project. So if you go to the noun project, I like to look for um, cool icons here and bring icons in and make it more infographic-ish. Have you guys um, heard of that website or anybody here use it? No, it is very cool. So you can get icons for everything. And they're PNG and you can like, they'll custom color them and everything. So let's say here I'm dealing with um, unemployment. I'm just gonna put unemployment just for kicks and see if we get something. We do, so there's some little icons there. All that, they're kind of sad. This guy is sad, huh? But if I click on this, I can uh, download it, I can color it, so I can pick any color that I'm wanting to. So this kind of lessens my dependency on a graphic designer because then typically I would have to go to somebody and say, hey, could you create a PNG image for me and make it this particular color? This gives me some flexibility. I think this is $30 a year, which is really cheap. And they also have cheaper, like a free version, but I think there's some limitations on coloring or something. 
But you know, just for kicks, if I wanted to download this, I can save it as a SVG or a PNG. I'm gonna do a PNG. And so this is what it's gonna look like. I don't know why I picked purple, but we'll go with it. And so we're gonna save this guy. And actually, I'm going to, um, I'm gonna sh yeah, I'll just keep it in my downloads for now. Okay, so if I come back over here, not like that. I have the ability to bring in different icons. So maybe I wanna bring in an image and I'm gonna put it up here. And I can go to my downloads. This is him right there, I believe. Yep. And so I can bring this image in here, and I'm going to center it, and I'm going to fit it. So I have my little purple icon going on over here. And let's say I want to um, bring in some images for the gender, for like the guys and the gals. They have some built-in um, shapes is what they call them and i can bring in custom shapes if i wanted to but so for this they have some gender ones we're just going to do like a person and then we'll differ it by color so if i have a shape here then i can bring nope i want gender on shape I can come in here to my shape again. I'm gonna do shape here, and I'm gonna go back in here, gender. I could change them, I guess, to a guy and a girl. But so I have the ability, and with my shapes, let's say you have some custom um, logos or you have some custom shapes that you use at your organization, you can actually bring those in custom in here and then they'll show up under your shape palette. You just have to bring them in one time and then they'll always be there. Super simple, you just go to a certain file and upload them, which is uh, very easy. So if I come back up here to gender, I can see what I'm, just have just the basic person shape here. But let's say I wanna color them, so I might come over here to color, just drag it. So as you can see, it's super drag and drop easy where it can get complicated is when you start doing these uh, custom calculations and such but we're just going to go with it for now anytime I'm, I'm doing a visualization I try to remove as many pixels as possible because every single pixel or mark that's on this dashboard the eye is having to interpret and figure out what to do with it so as I'm building I'm just going to throw a whole bunch of stuff together and then I'm going to begin the process of taking things away to get something real clean um, and easy for the eye. So I'm going to start uh, by adding a title and we're going to call this um, Unemployment Statistics and we're going to say 2005 to 2015. Actually, you know what, I'm just going to do 14 because I'm going to exclude and I'm going to show you guys a cool little trick. So if I'm excluding this, I'm going to center it. I like to make it really big and bold it. I'm going to come back over to my data source, go back over to this worksheet, and I can just do a data source filter. And I'm going to say add and period. I'm going to say OK. And then year, I'm going to come back over here. And I'm going to exclude 2015 since it only has one quarter and say okay now i don't it's excluding it from every single worksheet versus having to go to every single element and filter that out so i'm looking at unemployment statistics for 20, 2005 to 2014. Um, right now they're in date order so 2010 was pretty crazy um, the highest there i could easily sort them if i wanted to but i think what i'm going to do is leave them in order and then I'm going to um, actually you know what I think I might do is I think I might want to make an icon for a guy and a girl and then let the user just click on the icon to interact and I don't want them I want them to be the same like this like neck and neck and I want them to be just a little bit bigger so let's see if I do this and I tell it to fit entire view. Now, if I click on the men, it's changing. If I click on the women, OK. 
Okay, now let's say I want to go here, and I'm going to bring this gender color. Sorry, is it hard to hear? If I bring this gender color here, and I come over here and also bring gender color, what's cool is I can make this highlight what's happening in the others. So I'm going to go right up here, and I'm going to do a dashboard action. And I'm going to add an action and tell it to highlight. And so I want sheet two. When I click on it, I want it to affect sheet one and three when I, when I select it. And I'm going to say OK. So now when I do this, it highlights. Nope. It's still filtering. Let's not make this be a filter. There we go. Now it's going to highlight these that are standing out in each. So you could imagine if you had something with, let's say, 15 or 20 different categories, you could quickly highlight and see any, just, you know, have them pop out from the rest. Okay, so like I said, I'm going to start taking away from. I'm actually going to bring this guy over here and I'm going to hide the title and I'm going to hide all this stuff because I don't want any um, things for my eye to have to interpret. Okay, and then I'm going to come over here and I'm going to take this away, this axis, remove as much possible. See these faint lines in the background? I don't want those. I don't want the eye to have to interpret that. So I'm going to fit the entire view here, fit the entire view here. And I don't like these both being bars, so we're going to change it up a bit. Um, remove these. Uh, these rows in the back first. Rows and columns, I'm gonna get rid of those. Come back over here and get rid of those. Okay, so um, I am not a proponent of pie charts. I absolutely hate pie charts, but pie charts are okay if you're dealing with elements or you have category five or less categories. Anything over that, it's really difficult for the eye to interpret. So just for example, if we come over here and we made this a pie chart and we take gender off and we take this to angle and age to color, it's very difficult. Like if you were staring at that, you would have to really, I mean, so many of them look just alike and I really would have to look at it for a long time to figure it out. And so I'm just not a big proponent of pie charts. If you have to use a pie chart, like you're your leader or whoever is using this is like, no, I've got to have my pie chart, then give them their pie chart. But um, if, the, if you don't have that scenario, don't use the pie chart. Try to stay away from those as much as possible. So we're going to go back. What I love about Tableau, it has a back button, so you can quickly go back to where you were. And what we're going to do here is we have a, the option of, you know, just flipping it. We have over here the show me. You can quickly change, so we could change it. There's so many different things that we could do. We could do scatter plots. We can do bubbles. Um, I really like these whisker plots. Um, these can be helpful as well. The coloring on these is a little bit different. So you could see um, if we took not color and we took gender to color. You can kind of see, so this right here is showing us the overview and how it's breaking up into each um, age category. We could do it that way. Um, we can come back up here and just do the bars again and do, we could do, see how we're keeping gender separate there or we can do age and then gender. There's just a lot of different ways. But the cool thing I hope that you see with Tableau is how quickly we're just, changing things on the fly and, and building things and going, do I like that? Do I not like that? What works? Once you um, start to kind of get a feel of like, yeah, this is a great visual for this. I'm seeing something kind of stand out here, then go for it. This one, um, we're looking at years. You know what I might do on this one is take gender completely off so that I can just see what I'm looking at per year and I'm probably gonna flip it. And so if I bring it back over here, I'm going to change, I've got this purple, totally did not mean to pick that purple, but um, let's go here. I'm going to change this to more of just like a dark gray, because it's going to be an overall number. 
Now, if I click on 2007, I'm able to see uh, the chart below um, change. Now, if I wanted to, I could say, okay, well, what's the, um, let's say I wanted to place an average across here. I could come into here. I'm going to show this again, the header, and I can just right click. I'm going to add a reference line, and Tableau is going to do all this calculation for me. So I'm going to tell it per pane. So I'm telling it, I just have one pane currently or entire table in this scenario is the same thing. And I'm going to put average. But I have a lot of flexibility because I can just put a value in. I can put nothing. I can put, um, um, I can put test. I can put whatever I want here to help explain what's going on. So I'm going to say, um, I don't know. We'll just say computation so they know it's an average. And I'm actually going to have it be a dotted line. We're going to say here. So we know what the average is. Average uh, per year is 43 million people. Um, get rid of this because I don't need it. Um, let's say, any ideas what I could do with the guy and girl? I kind of was wanting to do the guy and girl um, individual. Think I should keep it? Does that make sense to you guys, the ability to click on a guy or girl? Yeah? Okay. So if I keep that, let's see how else I can split. I'm looking at it by year. I'm looking at it by age. Um, maybe I come over here and I'm like, you know, I like this one. I don't want to have to start from scratch. I can actually just uh, duplicate this. And it takes it, uh, starts a brand new sheet for me, but I don't have to start all over. Maybe I'm going to take the age off. And I'm going to do gender like this. And then I'm going to bring gender to color. And then I can bring that one back on over here. Quickly bring that to, let's say, right here. I'm going to get rid of this because everybody pretty much knows what the blue and the green means. And I think I'll flip this. I want it to go up and down. And I'm going to have it fit the entire view. Fit the entire view. So quickly I can see, okay, if I want to look at 2010, I can click on that. I can see it's mostly men. Is it going to be mostly men every time? Um, and then I can see a breakdown of years. Cool. Anybody thinking of any other way to possibly visualize this as you're looking at it? Maybe we could see a correlation um, between age and gender. So if I do age and gender here, and I see here, it's going to do these what are called um, text boxes or grids, or it's going to look more Excel-ish. Um, I try to stay away from doing this just because, I mean, how long do you have to look at that before you really can even digest that information? Um, so I'd kind of stay away from that unless it was meant to just be um, down at the bottom. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, so Tableau will do all that for us, which is awesome. So like right here, I've got the sum. So I'm going to do a table calculation, and I'm going to tell, it's, I, I can say I want the running total, the difference, the percent of difference, percent of total, rank it, percentile, moving average. So let's say percent of total. Um, let's say I wanted to do what men and women were for each age, so go left or right versus the whole I don't know how it's figuring it right now, actually. Let's see what it's doing. Table across. So yeah, it would be. It's dispersing it between men and women currently. Um, I could do table down. So of men, the highest percentage for men in the, um, is in the 25 to 34 year bracket. For women, it's the same. Let's say I go back and I'm, you know, I go across. Uh, 65 and over, majority is women. Um, pretty close, even in the 35 to 44, 45 to 54. Does that answer your question? Kind of do that type of thing. Um, there's a lot of different things it can do here. It can also do um, compute using, um, let's say, gender. Um, I think I have to bring it on here somehow. If I brought gender here, I've already got gender on here, so that's not going to work. Uh, maybe we bring, uh, 
um, the year into it. We could bring in year after. Kind of just really depends on what, what question are you trying to answer. Um, typically when I sit down with a client uh, for the first time, I'll want to know, um, you know, kind of get a feel for, you know, sometimes people will come to you and say, I've got this data set and um, they maybe already know, maybe they're just having to bring a data set to you because so-and-so told them to, so they don't really know what they don't know yet. They're just bringing you a data set. I usually ask them, okay, like, what are you hoping, what questions are you hoping to be able to answer with this data set? What challenges are you having? Why are we looking at this data set? Starting there, and then can I answer those questions with it as well as go a little bit farther or find different discoveries? So a lot of questions from me to them at the get-go. Once I've got kind of a framework and an idea of, okay, this is what they're looking for. What's the goal? Are we trying, is the whole goal of this project to see how unemployment is fluctuating between men and women? Or are we really wanting to know answers as far as age brackets because we're doing a study on a particular age group? Like what is the focus? What is it that they're trying to look for? Using that as a starting point and then just doing a lot of what I've just been doing now, which is just very... Um, kind of all over the place, just playing with the data. You can do this for, you know, a couple hours at a time. Once I've got something that's a little bit interactive, I'll usually meet with the client again and say, okay, these are some things that I'm seeing or that I'm noticing. And then that will lead to more conversations and a couple of other iterations. Um, let's say I've got here, I'm here on this one. I'm gonna change this one from the, the number to the percentage. And so I'm gonna do a quick table calculation percent of total, and I'm gonna label it because I wanna be able to see quickly. And maybe I've got somebody who's really picky and they're like, I don't want two decimal places, I just want the whole number. Well, that's pretty easy. We can just come in here to format and I'm gonna go into my pane and I'm gonna take and make it, um, take out my decimals right here. What's cool about here in this custom, let's say you've got funky data formatting, you've got um, a number that needs a decimal that doesn't have a decimal, or maybe when it's a positive, they want a plus in front of it. When it's a negative, they want a negative in front of it. You can add and do those kind of cool things here. So now I can see I've got percentages. I'm gonna hide these again to keep sneaking in here. Uh, so now I want to look at just the women again. I can see that, and it's not highlighting up here. So let's bring the reason. Let's go back and kind of explain how Tableau thinks. If I'm interacting with data, this, if I'm clicking on this and I want it to, let's say, interact with this, this element has to be on this worksheet for Tableau to know what I'm doing here. It has to be there somewhere. So you can see when I went back and added it, you can, t you can see now it's, it's showing up. Maybe I don't like that line there, there, there though, so I don't want that. Well, I can just come to color and I'm gonna take the border away so that you can't see it. So I have my whole number here, but I'm looking at women, I'm looking at men, I'm looking at different age, age brackets. Let's say I wanna go back over here, 25 to 34. I can see it broken out by this way. So again, on the surface, you can do a lot, super interactive. It can get complex pretty quick, um, but what I'm showing you here is, is pretty basic. I'm going to, again, start taking stuff away. So I don't want unnecessary elements, so I don't want to see the axis there. Um, age, I think people pretty much know that that's the age if I wanted to, um, um, unemployment by age brackets, I can do that. I like to um, do a little bit of shading here, just a, just a real slight to keep it where you can see it separates out. Um, here, I'm going to get rid of this. Um, I don't need to see that. And then I'm gonna get rid of these lines that are in the back because I just don't want, I don't want my client having to, their eye to have to figure that out. And so this one's gonna be um, an employment by year. And I'm going to format this, shading, make it here. 
Um, this purple is really throwing me off, so I'm gonna get rid of it. I just, it's, it's just really throwing me off, and I'm not gonna have it in there. Okay, so um, this, I'm not liking this over here. So maybe if we were to look at quarters, let's see. Let's go back over here, and we're gonna duplicate this sheet because I don't wanna have to start from scratch, so it's cool, I can just duplicate. And I'm gonna change this to quarters. And so um, it doesn't matter, it's looking at all years, it's just breaking them into quarters. So I'm gonna bring this new sheet that I just did, and I'm gonna bring it, um, let's say over here. And no, that's not my sheet, so let's not do that. Let's do this guy. That is not him. One, two. So if I bring this over here, I can see, let's see, since I duplicated it, it carries some stuff over, so you kind of have to watch for those details. Um, I'm gonna get rid of this for now. Okay, so now I've got it by quarter. I'm gonna change which direction it's going, though, quickly. You can just flip it. And I can see, this is taking way too much space right over here. I can see each quarter looks like super similar, which is interesting. I don't need that because I know that that's a quarter. Um, I don't need the average line. Okay, I can see that it's, um, gosh, it's like crazy. So now that I hid that header, I'm gonna have to show it again. And I know I'm, I'm, I'm blazing through this insanely fast, but my, my hope is that you guys can see once you get in here and you start playing with it, just how quickly you could crank something out that would typically take, um, I mean, other tools that might take um, quite a bit of time, especially if, if each element had to be custom, custom built. Okay, so I'm gonna use this as a filter. So if I'm looking at quarter one, I can look at, see how quarter two, so I'm looking at quarter two of every single year, it's filtering each of those out. Um, so I can see get some interactivity there. I might spend some time digging in and looking into that. I might um, come over to the uh, men and women. Maybe I want to bring icons back. Maybe I don't. Maybe I just want to leave it like it is. I can click here. Um, it looks like it's not filtering, so let's turn that back on. And it looks like uh, something that's kind of interesting. So for women, quarter three, is higher of in general overall, whereas with men, it looks like it might be a quarter one. So then that's a conversation point. Why is, why does women's unemployment rise in quarter three? Um, what makes the third quarter, what's so different about the third quarter? And is that an anomaly by a year or is that consistent. So that's the type of questions that I'm hoping as I, as I create this, that it causes the user to begin to have those questions and do more exploration. My job is to not give them the answers. My job is to create a tool that allows them to explore and brings their data into um, some oblivious um, data warehouse to something that they can um, it's almost like it's tactile. They can interact with it and get to know it and, and play with it. If I do my job well in the sense that I make my visuals super simple, and my goal is super simple, I want to create something that um, an eighth grader, a fifth grader could stumble upon and understand, okay, this is by year, this is by bracket, something super simple. Sometimes people think creating a visual that's uh, more complex is more impressive. And that is actually, I, I don't do that because what it does is it intimidates the end user and you'd be surprised at how many end users, business users, which is who most of us are creating this for, um, are intimidated by data or uh, depending on what your customer or segment, let's say for example when I was in the nonprofit, their skill sets were um, more relational based, maybe less business side. And so if I created something super complex, they're gonna be intimidated by it, and nine times out of 10, they're not gonna say anything because they don't wanna look stupid. So they're not gonna say anything, but you'll notice that they just won't interact with it, and so then you'll feel like you're creating stuff for nothing, which is not fun at all. 
So try to err on the side of super simple, err on the side of removing as many um, pixels as possible. Like I see some faint lines there, so I'm gonna get rid of those. This guy doesn't have a title, so let's give him a title. We're gonna save um, by gender. And again, I could spend, plan on, um, as far as the fine details, plan on, you know, they, they say the last 20% takes most of the time. Um, that That is very true. So um, plan on getting majority of your visuals built and probably the same amount of time um, doing fine tuning and interacting with it. So if you'll notice when you click over here, you're gonna see these pop-ups. So what I try to do is have these pop-ups tell a story. So that's cool. So I can come in here to my tooltip here and do any type of customization. So I can say, um, let's say um, for the age brackets, I don't know if this is gonna look right. And I say, um, I can go right here for the age bracket and insert age. Um, I'm gonna insert the number here and the gender here. We're unemployed. And then I could get fancy and bring in, this represents X amount of percentage of total for the year or for the quarter or whatever. We can get really fancy. And so now what you'll see, so I, I put these uh, fields in and they're gonna be dynamic. And actually I wanna make this a little bit bigger so that it jumps. I'm gonna say here so I can see for the age bracket, 35 to 44 years, X number of women were unemployed, men were unemployed. I could also bring in, like I was saying, like this might represent 46% of the total. I can bring that additional information into the tooltip. So it's not taking real estate space on the canvas, but as the user began to interact with it, they could see that additional information. Then I can interact with, I can name this, unemployment um, statistics. I can name it whatever I want there. And um, bring in some, like I say, bring in some more different icons or pictures or whatever else I wanted to bring in, but it, the whole thing should be fairly interactive. So if I click on 2009, oh, I know one thing I'll usually do. Um, because it may not be intuitive, if someone were just to come stumble this on, I might bring an image. I'm gonna bring it floating and I'm gonna bring an image on. And my image is going to be um, a pointer and I can make this smaller. And I'm just gonna bring and float this on here so that this kind of lets the user know. I mean, if most people see this icon on a website or in an app or something, then they know that, um, hey, I can, I can click on this, I can interact with it. I can also bring information in here, um, maybe the data source of where I got it. I would like to document that and maybe make that small and kind of fade it out so it doesn't take um, a ton of space, wherever it is I ended up getting it. That can be over here. Um, so now that I've got this and the user hopefully can see that it's interactive, that they can click around on it. One thing I might do, these seem kind of small to me, so I'm gonna format them, make these a little bit bigger, maybe like a 12. Same with these, seems, these seems kind of small. And I might be like, okay, I'm cool with that. I feel like I'm, I'm ready to um, publish this. Anybody have anything else they might do different or have any suggestions before I publish it? Looks kind of clean and straightforward. So the quick, easy thing to do is I can go up here to server and I'm going to go to Tableau Public for this one and I'm going to, um, actually I'm gonna publish the workbook. Is it gonna let me? Tableau Public. So I have, okay, so it's whenever I'm, it's gonna ask me to extract the data first. So I'm going to come over here. What this is gonna do is create a temporary file 
and basically disconnect it. I'm going to create an extract. I'm going to save it in my folder on Dropbox. And then I can put it on a refresh schedule. And it will automatically go fetch new data whenever I tell it to. So we're going to go back up here, server, publish workbook. And my workbook title, we're going to call this unemployment statistics. save it and hopefully it doesn't do all the sheets hopefully it gives me the option if not I'm going to show you a little trick so there if we were to go to Tableau public anybody could see this and interact with it let's see if I want to add, if I can put a description, I can make it where people can download, so I can allow it to be downloadable by others. I'm going to leave it there, so if you guys wanted to go download it, you could. Um, we don't want to show those. We could add a, we can do, give credit to whoever needs the credit. I guess with, there's no save option, so I got it. Okay, so this is, if you go to um, public.tableau.com um, and search for my profile, you'll see that my workbooks are in here. So if I go over to uh, my profile, you'll see there it is right there. So I've got uh, a couple other ones that are up there, but now you could go here to view this. And what you would do is you would just share this um, URL with whoever, and anybody could go to it and interact with it and play with it. Um, and they could download it, they could um, print it, they could filter it, they could download just the data set that's in, in with it. And then um, as I refresh this data, it will refresh because it's, it's connected in the cloud, but if it was connected on my desktop, it would not refresh. Um, certain, now there are certain data, um, I came across this recently, certain, um, let's say you have SQL Server and you're connected to it and it's on site, Whenever you're doing um, and you're publishing to, um, let's say they use Tableau Online, you have to use what's called a bridge service in order to maintain a, a refresh schedule. However, if your SQL Server or any other type of database is in the cloud, then you're just going to embed credentials and you're good. So I always recommend doing that. But if you don't have the option, there is a, a work between versus if you have Tableau server that you maintain in-house, you don't have to worry about any of that. Um, any questions about any of that? Makes sense? Yeah? Anything else you would want to see or um, scenarios or? Yeah. What was your question again? Okay, so the question was when you're building these visuals and you're connecting to a really large database, do we have any performance issues? I haven't ran into anything. Um, what, one thing you can do, like you just see how I created that extract? That will increase performance enormous, um, as well as doing any of those data filters. You can also, before you create your extract, you can aggregate any of the data. So let's say you're dealing with data that's by the minute or something, that's why you've got so much of it. You can roll it up to whatever level that you're actually wanting to do the analysis, and that will compact it. Um, I've connected to on um, Google BigQuery 100 million rows and haven't really had any like, I mean, it, it's not like it's, you know, instantaneous, but when you consider what's going on and happening behind the scenes, it's just maybe three seconds, four seconds. Um, it comes up fairly quick. Um, more than anything that will slow this stuff down is if you have a lot of calculations. So we didn't even, like, go over calculations in here. You can write, you know, crazy calculations. Once you start getting a lot of those on top of each other, then you've got... Uh, Tableau having to run those every time somebody would bring this up, it would run those every time. Uh, 
Uh huh. So the question was, what kind of customizations do you have when working with maybe data that's dirty or that you're wanting to change? So Tableau's not going to ever speak back to your data warehouse, right? So it's, you can make changes in Tableau, but it's not talking back. It's one-way communication. Um, I, I can't change the dirty data, but I can filter it out or I can alter it. So let's say I've got a case where, let me give you an example. Let's say we had um, some genders. Okay, let's do this. Let me go back to the data set, and I'm going to mess with the, the data set and give, and this really does happen, and I know you guys will all agree. Um, what's the best way for me? Let me go into here. I'm going to make some changes to my data set and I'm going to screw it up a little bit. And I'm going to change this and say some of this stuff was fat fingered or data was collected just a little bit differently. Okay? So those say women's, the rest say women. So what do I what you know, what can I do with that? I'm going to save this close this out. Now when I go into Tableau, because I've changed that, I'm going to have to, and I'm extracted, I'm going to have to refresh this extract. And once I refresh it, you should see, see now this women's shows up. I know that that's supposed to be women, so I have a couple options. I can quickly group them together and say they're the same thing and, and change it. Okay? Or I can write a calculation. Come on. I can write a calculation on gender. Come on. Like I say, I'm not used to being on a Mac here. I'll just do this. Create calculated field. Okay, and I'm going to call this gender, and I'm putting it in caps because I know this is the one I want to use. So I can say if contains, and it contains women, caps do matter, then women, else, men, end. Okay, so now I've got this new gender, but I've used this other gender all over my workbook, and I'm like, ah, quick, easy fix. Right click, or actually go to the old one, and I'm going to say replace references, and I'm going to say I want to replace all of my old gender with this new one, and it changes them all. The negative thing is it changes your color scheme. That's the yucky part. But you can see it went back and changed everything. Does that answer your question? So let's say, um, okay, so with numbers, so let's say like a, um, let me think of a scenario. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, yeah. So let's say um, I could um, create calculate field. I could say um, I don't have this in this data set, so it's going to be hard to see it. But if unemployed is less than zero, then it's negative. Else it's positive. Um, I could also. Let me uh, let me think of a workbook I could show you maybe that might have this. Yeah, you totally get, yeah. So like you could even say if it's um, greater than one, you could segment it greater than one. Mhm. Mm um, so, are you saying you just want the average of it, or my data set? This is a really bad data set for looking at numbers since they're all positive. 
Um, let me try to think of something I could show you. I have something. Let me think. Oh, I know what we could do. We could look at like sales data. Let's do that. So Tableau comes with um, built-in um, samples. So let's say this is Superstore. And um, the cool thing is you can take a whole bunch of different data sets and bring them all together. And as long as there's a unique identifier between the two, you can connect them all. So I'm looking at just Super Superstore. Um, let's say I'm going to look at um, compare profits with um, sales, and I'm going to break it down by segment. I'm going to break it down by customer, whatever. Let's say I wanted all of those that were negative profit to stand out. Then I could come over here and say create calculated field, and I could say, um, I can name this whatever. I'm going to say um, color profit. I'm going to say, so if profit is less than zero, and then I'm going to say under, else, over, and um, so then I'm going to do this, I can bring this to color, and then you can see where it automatically splits that out. Let's say um, I can do calculations within that, so then I could say uh, color, um, gosh, I'm trying to think, there's so many different ways you could do this. Um, can I bring another dimension? Yeah. So let's say, um, create, let's do another one. So um, I'm just going to call this color example two. So we're going to say if, let's say segment. Oh, let's do region because I know if region equals east, we know it's the east region, and profit is less than zero, then we're going to say um, poorly performing east profit else. And we could keep doing else if, else if, else if, just keep adding. But I'm just going to say else, and we're going to call it other end. So color example number two, I can bring this and bring this to color. Now you can see that um, I could spot Joni is a consumer in the East that has a negative profit and she stands out. Now I could maybe make this the transparency a little bit and I can change my shapes to be filled so maybe they can stand out a little bit. Maybe I want to bring segment into it. Then this filter is, is going to work in unison with my calculation that I'm showing on color. Does that answer your question? I mean, it's, this, it's, it is, it's really limitless. And that's why I say when it, it's super simple at, at first if you're just displaying some data. Where it gets a little more complicated is when you start blending the data. So you've got maybe um, data in one set that you're doing with a calculation in another set. That gets a little more complicated. Um, trying to think if you've got one data set that's a different level of aggregation at another, that can get a little bit com that can get complicated. Um, but for the most part, just thinking, I think a lot of these are going to be written the same way that you guys typically normally think. They're just going to be a little bit different. It's kind of a combination of Excel and SQL. Like I say, the online community is fantastic. So you just ask a question, anybody will answer it. They're amazing. I think that's the only, I think that was the key for me. Really able to learn and use this was the community was so amazing. And I get stuck. I could easily get unstuck and move forward. But any other questions? Yeah. Can you embed this data in a website, like in your own website? Yes. So the question is, can you embed this data in your website? Yes, you can. So once I've published, um, I think there's, I'm trying to think, there's probably a quick tutorial out there. But yes, the, sh the, yes, the short answer is yes. Yes, you can. Um, it would have to be public. 
So as if I, um, let's say I had a company, I wanted to embed this in maybe our, our company portal or something of that nature, and it was confidential, I can put permissions on that. Um, and I can also do permissions, let's say I only want Joe to see the East region, I can do row level permissions on that level as well so that he can only see his particular data and not be able to drill down. So there's a lot of security you can put into it, but if you're wanting just like, hey, I don't wanna invest a whole lot of money, but I wanna create something and put it on my website, then you just have to publish something to Tableau Public, which the caveat of that is it's not secure. Anybody can see it, so. But if you had confidential data, then you would have to then get into the whole licensing of passwords and all that stuff. Make sense? Cool. Any other questions? Is this helpful? I mean, do you feel like you know a little bit more about it? Do, do you guys, any of you guys use it at your places? No? We used it a lot where I came from. I mean, it was every department, every area. We had like 4,000 different dashboards, it was crazy. Survey data is really fun to visualize in here. Um, Cause you know that survey data, when you know most of the time people are looking at just the big Excel spreadsheet and it's hard to see the insights, but visualizing it. Um, and I hope you can see just how quick and easy. It takes a good six to nine months of working with this on a, on a pretty regular basis to feel real comfortable with it. But like I say, cause it can get complex fast, but um, it's a lot of fun, I absolutely love it. So, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the question was, do you have any best practices as far as where you store your data or how you're bringing in various pieces of data? It doesn't really matter. Um, really where you um, might kick yourself in the butt or later get down the road and go, ah, oh, I wish I would have done that differently, is just when you go to publish it and the refresh. So let's say the, one of the current scenarios I have with a client right now is they've decided to do Tableau online, but their SQL server is on site. Well, so now the challenge is, well, they've got to have a bridge license to be able to get it to refresh, or somebody has to manually refresh it every day. Well, that bridge license is equivalent to a desktop license. And so they're like, oh, well, that's an expense we didn't realize we were gonna have. So then it's like, well, if their SQL server were, was in the cloud, they wouldn't have any problems. Or if they had Tableau server on site, then they wouldn't have any problems. So it's more, I don't know that one way is better than the other, it's just understanding when you choose to go a certain route, the way that this is connecting to it, there are gonna be potential challenges or additional expenses if you go one route or the other. Does that make sense? So, I mean, it's not that one way is better than the other either. It just more comes down to like budget or, you know, if you've gotta keep it on site for security and firewalls and all that stuff, or I don't know, just methodology of the company or whatever their values are. But if you guys do happen to get a hold of this, like I say, you can get a 14-day free trial license and play with it. Or if you do happen to start using it and you guys have any questions, feel free to email me anytime. I'd be happy to help you guys out if you get stuck or have questions. So, cool. If you guys have anything else, we'll just wrap it up. Is that good? Okay. Thank you guys so much. <laughs>